Hello, my name is Tim Lukings and this is Tuesday with Tim. I encourage you to read Job chapter 17 to 20 in preparation for this brief devotional. I know that the book of Job is a difficult read, but it's part of the Word of God and we're taking a look at the Word in chronological order and uh, so it's a necessary part of what we're doing. But there are some brief nuggets in there that are just incredible and I'm trying to find them for you and to uh, build our devotionals around those beautiful passages of Scripture. When our mind envisions a drowning man or woman, we tend to imagine their body almost fully submerged in water with their arms flailing above and they gasp for life-giving air while there's nothing to reach or to hold on to. Uh, there's nothing secure to help them keep their head above the water. This scenario also seems to be true of many, even Christians sometimes, who are drowning in the circumstances that are deeper than their ability to handle on their own. They have nothing firm to cling to, and as a result, their life and often their lifestyle simply gets out of control. Job was nearly at that place. It's amazing that we could say nearly, since most of us would have drowned in Job's circumstances long before now. In our text, Job had another moment where truth provided him with something to cling to. It was a nevertheless moment. And that means that although the circumstances were uh, seemingly overcoming him, he found something to grasp hold of. He found something secure. And he proclaims in chapter 17, verse 9, Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways, and those with clean hands will grow stronger. He determined that he would not give up his righteous lifestyle, despite his endless questioning about what was going on in his life. He was determined to live as God wanted him to live, despite his many questions and his present lack of answers. He, he found security in walking righteous before God. It's amazing how quickly some give up on their faith and, and even their Christian lifestyle when things aren't going their way. Perhaps some draw the, the conclusion that they can do a better job of running their lives than God can. Others may assume that living God's way isn't worth it if this is where it gets them. And still others feel that if God isn't going to answer their prayers in their way and in their time, then they will punish him by living for self rather than living for God. How foolish. Job, in his wisdom, knew that the most secure path to be on was God's path. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God teaches us this truth. God gave them this command, Obey me, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Walk in all the ways I command you, that it may well go well with you. That's Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. God's path may lead us through some valleys. The enemy may even attack us along the way. Still, it's always the safest place to be, and it's the only path that will lead us to the end that we are seeking after. I love the Psalm of David when he acknowledged God's deliverance from the hands of Saul and, of course, all of his enemies. It's from Psalm chapter 18, verses 1 to 20. He says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I, I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried out to my God for help. For his temple, from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came from his mouth, burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning he routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke. Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. 
He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued you, me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. So Job's nevertheless moment was once again a revelation of life-saving truth. Spiritually speaking, the righteous will hold to their ways and those with clean hands will grow stronger. My name is Tim Lukings and this has been Tuesdays with Tim.